or the disciples and as a result divine grace that answered so that summarizes the entire yoga there has to be a call a seeking and then in response to that seeking something is given to man to the extent he is capable of receiving so the seeking came because during the second world war a lot of children came and these children came and uh, the ashram life before that was very different extremely concentrated life so now also concentration is there but it is in the inner layers if you see outside one does not easily find it but it was very concentrated there were no families people uh, would meet and greet but not like social interaction all that though ye bacche aa gaye children came and they sort of um, created a totally new uh, energy at the same time new challenge in the environment so mother said this was a difficulty we had to take up at some point of time this was a issue but it is prematurely we are taking it why because with them came families and with them came teachers and uh, nobody was equipped and the children needed kyunki people came to take refuge in pondicherry somehow there was the idea that if we are in pondicherry we are safe so this idea was partly maybe because um, well french and britishers both were uh, allies powers uh, by that standard but people felt safe so lot of families from calcutta because it was under attack from you know the japanese and other families from delhi and other these places came so for them the school started now it's interesting how it started it didn't start by um, uh, you know making a building uh, recruiting teachers and then making classroom so this is important because how things start so how it started was that children say a child wanted to study french so there was somebody who was asked to teach french some child wanted to study dancing <laughs> so you know mother would pick up someone and say teach this child dancing somebody wanted to study painting so very spontaneously somebody wanted to do body building so uh, you know gymnasium started so every activity started by a felt need this is so important in transmitting this education and along with the felt need there was a grace which uh, allowed to develop and there again there was no format for instance it was not like okay you want to study french we'll have classes organized from this to this time this to this time so on and so forth it was like spontaneously the teacher should be free and the student should be free and they would come together and they would say okay 10 o'clock we are meeting and we'll have an hour of french there again it was not by a format that okay we'll first learn alphabets nothing they would pick up a book in french and start reading now this is very interesting because you know if one has to really follow integral education in the true sense i'll give you an example when my son was admitted here and he came to kindergarten we left came to leave him so as soon as he was taken in and we were standing the teacher asked us simi ben that just stay stay for a few minutes just in case there is an issue Uh, I mean, in case he cries or something, though we know he is not going to cry. He's gone through all that uh, in kindergarten. So you know, she started communicating with him, uh, with him in French. She would throw a ball and tell in French. So he was a bit lost, and we intervened, saying that uh, she, she, he doesn't know French. She said. you stay quiet <laughs> it was like you have told you to stay there so we stood there then we watched after a few minutes he began to understand the nuances she would of course make a gesture so he started picking up the language now shurbinda is you know for languages he has given away that read straight away from books which are uh, for instance how he read the sanskrit so he read the original he started reading valmiki ramayana and now you know valmiki ramayana in sanskrit for someone who doesn't know sanskrit similarly he would say that if you have to read french read french classical literature so basically it's a uh, the method if i have to summarize it summarize it the method is the felt need in a person opens the doors to learning so if the felt need is not there and the child is put in school with the idea of i am making a background breaking i mean not keeping in mind any format because if we keep a format we limit it first we must understand what is the ideal and how it shaped then we can try to see how we can fit into it so uh, basically when a, there is a seeking in a person to learn and if we look at it closely this is exactly how gurukul was 
see gurukul uh, we know that you know that story where uh, satyakam he goes and says i want to have brahma gyan the highest vidya so ch- a child of 5 could ask i want to have brahma gyan and how the uh, teacher teaches him he says okay you take 100 cows go to the forest and then uh, you come back when they are 400 and his wife asks him what are you doing he says no i know my disciple i know him you leave it to me <laughs> and he goes and comes back when he comes back he is a brahmagyani so there was no fixed method so this is how the whole thing grew based on the need and seeking and this is exactly how yoga shapes in this yoga for example if your respiration is this much accordingly the grace comes slowly the aspiration increases increases till finally you want the whole of it <laughs> all of infinity eternity then the grace also step by step here does not mean class 1 2 3 4 5 step by step here means that your thang- hunger and thirst should increase as you go up the ladder so in yoga it is done by the divine the task of the teacher is not to uh, quench the hunger and thirst by giving ready made answers it is you give the answers but you lead the child to the door steps of the answer if he cannot open the door teach him to open the door if he cannot understand what is there teach him to receive what is there and then to take him to the next le- level that this is not enough there is more so it is through this seeking which uh, later on came to be known uh, uh, well uh, unfortunately because people try to make system of everything is a free progress system free progress means when mother was asked what is meant by free progress this is the system followed in the school she said a progress guided by the soul so if you take the term from the gita it is swadharma guided by the soul so nobody was compelled for anything there is letters of mother where somebody come teacher comes and compels uh, says that you know this child does not like to study and mother would almost admonish the teacher what right you have to impose that a child must study <laughs> so the teacher doesn't know what to do she says what does the child then she calls the t- child she says what do you like you don't like to study she says no mother i don't like to study what do you want to do she says i i want to do photography 15 year old child mother got her a good camera said you do photography you know who is that child today she has received the padma shri award recently tara jawhar delhi ashram and that so this is not one story there are many stories like that that she would make people learn in a way that is consistent with their natural need and growth so today what has happened in education system that these needs have been it's like formula feeding so every child going to school has been fed into the head already that the child must come out as a successful entrepreneur doctor engineer or blah 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 whatever so the child doesn't even know what is his own swadharma so ambitions societal expectations all that so why i'm saying all this in practical terms in it means that simply educating the teachers is never enough teachers must also educate the parents so without parents being involved in this system you can't have the product because there'll be a mismatch it's it's like people come to sabda so you tell them what are you looking for some book by shurabindo and then they have heard about savitri somebody has told them you go and buy savitri this is a real story i am telling you so they come and pick up savitri they look here and there then they see ask a odd question kitna daam hai what is the cost so when i saw this happening few years back it was 300 rupees oh 300 rupees very uh, very costly so i get show me some other book now you see it is so silly <laughs> savitri is infinity so now this is where the felt need is important and if the teachers uh, the parents don't understand what we are really trying to communicate because we should be very clear we are not just training teachers we are building up a whole humanity that's how mother said the aim of education is to build a new humanity the prayer of the school is make of us the hero warriors we aspire to become so and then she says that maybe uh, fight successfully the battle of the future that is to be born against the past that seeks to endure 
so that we may be ready to receive the new things that are ready, waiting to manifest. So basically, the purpose of education is to prepare us for a new manifestation, which is way beyond what average person thinks. So basically, there has to be some kind of opening in the mind of parents in the society at large so that education can become a catalyst for change if you want to use a modern language it's not just to equip the children so this is what should catch the fancy of the teachers to whom you impart a training they must understand that we are not just doing a job but we are there to change uh, society for something better and beautiful something more divine the idea of, second thing which is important which the mother would emphasize, the idea of progress. So all education should be progress oriented. So that's where I said ki forcibly putting a child, inducting, hammering him into a shape, that's not how you know things should be. So uh, progress cannot be put into a child if the teachers themselves don't, uh, uh, are not keen to progress. What I mean by this is that average teacher, I mean, um, like for doctors we have journals which come every month so many of them and, and now for for teachers and many many uh, of the professions you become somebody by holding a degree and a, getting a job now you think it is finished a person feels now I am an IAS officer I don't have to learn anything or I am a teacher I have to now only teach but to know that this is only a beginning ground, there is so much more. In fact, knowledge is infinite. The moment we say, I know it, basically it means that I am a foolish, ignorant man and arrogant. So this thing that I know it was never spoken of in the Upanishad. In fact, the Isha Upanishad says that uh, Abhigyatam Vijanata, Abhigyatam Abhijanata. Those who say that they know it, know it not. And they who do not have the thought of it, they know it. So always to the teacher should understand that whatever the teacher may know is a relative thing. So if that can be inculcated or awakened in the teacher that there is so much more by exposure, how to do it? They have come with a standard pattern or books. You know, I'm also linking it with the practical thing because you're training the teachers. So teachers have read something perhaps in B.Ed. or the graduation about different subjects. Pick up any subject, take psychology for instance, or English or history. Now, there should be one of the sessions or maybe couple of sessions, should be just to make them understand that there is so much more to it than what is taught in the standard books. Take for example, history. Now, history is not just the story of kings and wars. History is about the march of civilization. Which, which is what, what we see in the Gita, Lok Sangraharth. So they don't understand. They, we don't have to tell them, read the Gita and understand Lok Sangraharth. That entire war, Sri Krishna says, is because of Lok Sangraharth. Meaning thereby holding the march of civilization forward. So when they start, doors begin to open. It's not about history being rightly written or wrongly written. That's a different subject altogether. But simply to understand what history is about, wars are not just wars between two kingdoms. Wars decide the way humanity moves forward. It can move one way, it can move another way. It can move in an evolutionary way, it can move in a retrogressive way. And to get a deeper understanding, for instance, why India fell in spite of all its glory? Well, when we look at it that because of Mayavad, because of a strong Buddhist influence, kings like Chandragupta Maurya, they accepted, you know, Jainism and Buddhism, very good for individual salvation. But as a national way of life, it became a problem. So then they would should understand that there is so much more to understanding a subject. Same with science. So they, they have their standard format of formulas. So every subject, now I don't want to go into because it's a whole area, but maybe, you know, sometime one could take up uh, that physics, for example, chemistry, biology, genes languages how did languages originate and for that one has to go back to the origin so again they must learn that how to create creative children to create creative children shobinda has given a very interesting uh, um, something uh, a hint a big hint he has said we must learn to recapture original thinking 
So I'll give an example of original thinking. There was a, um, in this school, I'll give two examples of real life interactions. Through these interactions, teachers should learn. One was when a, a group was asked, uh, um, students were asked that, well, if you have to measure from point A to point B, uh, a, a line, how would you do it? And then the child came up with the example, I'll do it with a thread and you know, and then I will probably put it on the scale. Okay, if you have to measure a circle, <laughs> no, you can't put a thread like that. So a child came up with a brilliant idea, of course it's the principle of speedometer, but for a 10 year old child to come up with this idea that I'll take a wheel and I'll put it around. And I see the time, uh, means he came up with the whole idea of speedometer. So this original thinking, instead of giving us, for instance, Ramayana and Mahabharata, give them time to explore history. So they must, in physics, uh, in genes, why the you know genes transmute in such a, everything actually for that matter. I mean, it's a whole world as I said. So they must learn creative thinking. Another was that uh, I know one uh, professor who used to teach here, he was Professor Venkat Raman. He was a uh, he had received reward from the Indian Institute of Science, very fine person. I know him very personally, very happy, jolly person. So he was teaching science, imagine, yeah, in the school. Not like I am big man and I won't teach in the school. So he would uh, teach the children all the geometrical figures. So he would teach, okay, this triangle, this is uh, rectangle, this square. Now after this, now what we have taught, we have taught the division of different categories. But what is missing is oneness. So at the end of all this, he will rub off everything. And then he will say, see, everything is there in it. And people would suddenly discover that one straight line, you can play with it, make a circle, make a rhombus, make this, that. A whole world will open that, you know, you need a point and you can build a universe out of it by putting the points in certain ways. So it was his way. Even about Gita's uh, Ekatvam uh, by, you know, food, cooking. So there's, there's a whole world. They must understand that what is taught in the books is only a very little limited knowledge and there's so much more. So if by real examples, not by simply telling them, and I could uh, send, write and send some examples, I have plenty in my interactions that I have gathered uh, through which they can be conveyed concepts uh, through which these concepts they can open their horizons. So with children their horizons must open. They must learn to think originally. This is so important. The fourth thing that Sri insists on speaks about is the science of Brahmacharya. This is forgotten. So why it is forgotten? Because Brahmacharya we only understand sexual control. And you tell a 14, 15 year old, he would doesn't understand it. You tell a teacher, he doesn't understand it. But if you say that Brahmacharya means that you have to learn to gather all your energies and learn to focus them on your highest goal. So it's all about self-disciplining yourself, all about self-mastery, self-disciplining, keeping your highest goal. Now at least you start with whatever work is there at hand. So discipline again, they have conception of discipline that take a scale and make the children sit or the other extreme, give them freedom to do whatever. I know in schools, horror videos have been shown because nowadays the in thing is that child should be given freedom. I know some children had a breakdown and so they had to contact me. So I was, I felt very sad that, you know, teachers in the name of freedom, freedom is the freedom to make choices. And children don't understand that they have to make choices. Discipline. Discipline is not something imposed from outside. Discipline is to learn to channelize their energies. So all of these are uh, simple concepts which need to uh, be discussed. And they have to be then applied in the individual class classroom. Uh, application has to start with first understanding the concept. And then discipline can be okay. The, the way you enter a classroom, the way you do anything, the way you hold a chalk and write for that matter, anything can become an opportunity. I know my, my pediatric professor, he uh, taught me, uh, all of us actually, how to hold the hand for, a, for checking the pulse. We had learnt it, but uh, he asked me, uh, show it, I look how to hold. So I held it and he asked me a strange question. I was uh, 18 year old, he said, have you never held a girl's hand? I said, uh, I was literally blushing. 
and then he taught me how to hold with that gentleness and that tenderness and i realized that holding a pulse is communicating to a patient if i hold like this patient feels pata nahi kya hai first he believes he is a machine so i realized that the way i am touching a patient it will communicate there is something called as healing touch so through so many examples we can really i mean i, I to add complete that story i don't know whether i have learnt it or not but <laughs> <laughs> but but to complete the story everything to become conscious one of the things that mother has repeatedly said make people conscious so this is the sixth uh, important element that uh, fifth was discipline uh, learning to channelize their energies why because they have they have a goal they should have a goal they should practice channelizing and it can be done anywhere and everywhere as i said holding a chalk and writing on the board playing on the uh, field doing your work so everything this ability to concentrate because in the end this what brings success the capacity to concentrate so they should learn how to concentrate concentrate in work concentrate within concentrate outside so what it means to concentrate why are we hearing but not able to understand so all these things have to be uh, it's a big again whole area i'm just giving a dropping a hint disciplining and concentration self uh, mastery to an extent now again it cannot be done in every child understandable there will always be children who are what they are for various reasons usually there is a home environment they have their own package they should not try to create 100% you know this idea of creating 100% we lose those real uh, um, you know diamonds because you are trying to shape everything into a diamond well Uh, let's accept the fact that not this was understood in ancient times it was known as adhikar bhed now we can't do it because you know it's democracy which is okay it's fine it has its own place but still we must understand not every child is meant for everything so we should have smaller sections maybe group discussions so new innovative ways they should come up with because this idea that every child must do the same thing learn the same thing in the same way uh, this is um, not going to work in times to come so Uh, uh seventh part was becoming conscious so this very important so becoming conscious one way is that this should be an interactive cl- interactive class that uh, what they did yesterday simple thing or what they did since morning or a simple question when you walk into the classroom how many steps you climb i used to ask this was my favorite question and to people who used to come with a depression i would ask them okay we'll talk about a depression but tell me as you walk to my office uh, what was the color of the uh, blooming trees that you saw <laughs> this was the all and grossed in depression no so <laughs> next time i said anyways when you come for the next appointment you must watch and uh, come and tell me so they learned that when they open to the world there is so much they are not aware of and it opens doors to joy so now there is no end to this innovativeness so teach them to be creative and very important to uh, teach them how to you know become conscious why we did do what we do that's so important why do we want to study why do you come to the classroom why do you want to play first this should be set right that we are not here to come first we are here to be our best so that there is no end to it the moment it is coming first then there is an end point so endless progress can only come when we are have the urge to better upon ourselves so in in this ashram school there used to be uh, prizes given on competition to children not competition completion of the school competition prizes were different so once the mother gave uh, that best prize it was called as pre excella to a child and people ask that the child has not done uh, anything much uh, um, in the test etc it says yes but you have noted that consistently consistently this girl has got 62 62 62 it is itself a feat to be consistent <laughs> she has not gone up but she has not sl- slid back so there were ways of seeing then she would suddenly pick up and give a prize for sincerity so you know all these qualities this is the eighth part that qualities which is so important now we speak about value education so through stories through personal example because children pick up how we behave with them so through qualities uh, our own qualities through qualities they which are there in um, in in the books 
role modeling, all this is important that they should understand that why value education is important. Value education is important to add value to your own life. Otherwise, you have the degree, but you don't have value. Everybody will do salam, sir, lekin piche se gali denge. To kya value hai aapki? Aapki, your value is worse than a, you know, street person because basically people don't respect you. They don't care for you. They don't love you. But you believe you are living in a bubble, illusion that I am a valued person. You are not a valued person. Even your husband or wife doesn't value you. So this learning to be a person, how to value, add value to your life. So this should be part of value education. This is important. How it can be transmitted through stories, it can be transmitted. It can be transmitted through living examples. Um, my favorites are characters in the Mahabharata and Ramayana. They are archetypes and if children learn about them, they will learn about conflict resolution, they will learn about different personality types, they will learn how to deal with real life issues. So that takes us to the ninth element which is life education. So important. How to handle money, how to handle relationship. So there is a vast field. So teachers should be equipped for that. So before we talk about five elements of education, psychic, spiritual, <laughs> Very simple. How to deal with a broken heart when they are 16? They don't know how to love. So, this is all, and this all will help them towards psychic. I'll tell you how. I mean, see what really the psychic wants. What is the food to awaken the psychic? Ultimately, it is divine. But before the divine, it looks at the divine manifestation. Just like we, we cannot straight away think of divine or abstraction or some have a whole past journey. So it's easy for them. Suddenly they look at a face and they, you know, hear a word and like Krishna hearing a word from Ghorarishi, Achyutam, he, you know, Akshitam, his whole doors open. But normally it is not like that. So normally the psychic uh, feels awakened when there are uh, divinity in manifestation Meaning thereby There are three ways Divinity expresses itself In manifestation Truth Beauty and good And with beauty goes Love and ananda Wherever there is beauty There is love Wherever there is love There is beauty And ananda So they must They must uh, learn to, For instance Speaking truth Which means to be Fearless and courageous Now this is psychic education because only a person within fairly awakened psychic, like in the story of Satyakam Jawali, we just referred to, or Nachiketa, these are stories of truthfulness, where a child is able to even contradict what the parent is saying, because he feels this is the truth. The Gita is based on truth. He says, you are attached, that's why your mind is, look, but look at the truth of things. So, Truth is something so important which I think in modern times is missing very, very badly. We want a shortcut and we are afraid and we are selfish. So we want our own things to come up. So uh, flattery, all this part of this untruth. So satyamev jayate nan ritam. So psychic education implies teaching, learning how to speak truth, how to even recognize truth before we speak. Um, how to, you know, have truth in feelings, how to understand. Uh, then good. So what really is good? So pleasant or the good? Shares and prayers. They must learn that uh, a quick uh, McDonald's uh, french fry or ice cream is not necessarily good. Nothing wrong about eating it, but it gives you pleasure. But good is something else. So that's where they need to understand. Then they should be left free. Nobody, I mean, teachers should not force anything on the child. But the child should be equipped. Later on, they shouldn't say, I, nobody told me what is Shreya's prayers I am learning after 40 years. It's the task of the educators to make them aware. Then they may or may not follow it, their problem. So again, this um, truth, good. What really is good? And beauty. Even appreciating a sunset. Simple thing. They can be asked, how was the dawn today? Such things, you know, beauty in gesture, beauty in action. And then, tenth thing for the psychic is, uh, again for the psychic and the tenth thing, uh, if they have to be asked, like, you know, people say how to talk about psychic education, very simple. Uh, ask them before doing any action, uh, consult here what you feel about it. 
not the so and they should be just explained this one that there is a surface feeling ha ah, i want to do it like this no just quieten that surface feeling go just be quiet and see feel here what you feel you should do otherwise they are in the head so in the head mind justifies we all know that mind can justify ravan could justify his actions and duryodhan could justify and everybody can justify but the heart is the seat of dharma because it's the seat of the divine presence that's what shri krishna says in the gita so if you if children learn to consult the heart if children learn to appreciate beauty in action beauty in action is the basis of ethics it's not moral right and wrong and similar like you can't be ang- to be anger is angry is to be ignoble you're coming down many steps you're acting like a serpent not like a manavachit vyavahar so all this uh, beauty truth and good are the door to the psyche consulting the inmost heart and this is very simple and can start with adults that just stay quiet it's you may not be able to act according to that but you will know what is the right thing so often i mean when people have this debate what is right what is wrong mind can justify anything but if you touch this base we will know we may not do it we may not be able to do it or we may not do it for 100 reasons that's a different story but at least we should not learn to lie to ourselves this mental honesty this base can be laid to children this will go a long way then exposure to what it means what really is divine we should make this idea not in terms of purely gods and forms and puja and rituals and temples but as psychological entities so what is meant by psychological entity agni is a god but agni is the will for progress it comes from the meaning ag to move forward aage 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 vayu is a god but vayu is the power in us which wants to it's all enveloping all embracing so vishnu is a god but yes what is that vishnu tattva in everyone it harmonizes balances so anything which is going in extreme vishnu brings it back to balance he intervenes what is shivatu you knows the capacity to drink take the you know poison of hate and all this and yet grow strong the capacity even to destroy evil and generous heart which is quick to give that shivatva even to a you know anybody he gives so readily so this way they must understand that gods are not just external forms and beings they are but we need not not necessary to and the gods also don't care that you know you go to a temple and do a ritual puja they care that if your nature because that their work of building humanity they are engaged in building devatva in us so if they see you have gone to puja but after that you are a kalanemi they send you hanuman to uh, blow the head out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but if they see a good deed a beautiful deed then they are happy god's grow in man so we should teach them in a more open way nobody will have any problem with that it's at once secular and spiritual to learn how to what is shivatva what is you know meant by it what is meant by uh, you know nurturing and fostering krishna you see krishna's smile in all circumstances so i would say if you want to uh, learn to please krishna learn to smile in all circumstances try it's a whole yoga that's what he does even on the battlefield krishna is smiling he never feels flustered and you know oh my god what's going to happen and this smile comes from the confidence of a child of trust in the grace of the you know that things dharma will be the victorious so all these things should come into that they should also be introduced the idea of dharma the right not in terms of the um, uh, religious scriptural idea of dharma in fact scriptural idea is quite right not the religious idea of dharma moral idea of doing uh, right and wrong but dharma is the law of evolution in built in everything everything has a way of doing dharma is when you put um, uh, nail on the wall you must do it with the right dharma so if you don't do it with the right dharma you will end up nailing your own uh, finger or breaking the wall so this is how there is a dharma of everything 
So this is just some of the thoughts I could just go on, but I realize that that's not what we are here for. <laughs> so I don't know, but I have just touched some of the points. Let me see if I have covered most of the points or not. If you have some questions, uh, please feel free to intercept and uh, you know people who uh, speak have a problem because they don't know where to stop. Okay, <laughs> speakers have a problem. <laughs> Anyway, so the questions were facilitation skills for an integral education facilitator. So this is how they must first understand what they are doing. It's not about skills, it's about understanding. See, skills develop. It's not like they have to do it this way. They have to be this way. Then the skills will develop. So most important is they must engage with integral education in the true way. They must know the goal of education. They must know their own place. They must be astute psychologists. This is the biggest skill for a teacher. They must understand psychology not as it is taught in standard books in B. Ed. courses. They must understand human psychology as we learnt it. How beautifully, you know. And they must learn to apply. There is no standard psychological format which you can apply on every child. Each child is unique, each child is different to an extent. You, we will need to probably, you know, apply it in a large group. But still, there also one can have a kind of category. There should be certain children needing a very different kind of special attention. The teacher should go, uh, step out of his boundaries and talk to such children. They are the doorways to the future. So, uh, basically, skills, psychological skills, skills... They must understand the relativity of their own knowledge and of all knowledge. Skills, self-mastery, very important. If a teacher is not master of oneself, is getting angry or, uh, you know, then it has a very bad impression on the child. The child stops respecting a teacher. Skill to cultivate calm, these are the qualities. The mother, in fact, gives a whole um, set of qualities. Let me just uh, read out, I had taken this out. So, uh, she speaks of the personality traits of a successful teacher. One, complete self-control, not only to the extent of not showing any anger, but remaining absolutely quiet and undisturbed under all circumstances. This one. Second, in the matter of self-confidence, must also have a sense of the relativity of, the, of his importance. A child is not always wrong and a teacher is not always right. You know, we had that movie on Madhavan had acted. What was the movie? Rocket. Rocketry. You see, the child can be right. So relative, and they may be thinking about which neither the child nor the teacher knows. So when a child asks a question which we don't know, teacher should not feel shy and say, okay, I'll get back to you tomorrow. In ashram school, this happens. Somebody doesn't know, say, okay, I'll read about it and come back to you. I'll try to understand. It actually increases your respect in the mind of the children. This I can say for sure as a psychiatrist. That okay, I don't know. Let me contemplate. Of course, if the doors of knowledge have opened, it's different. Uh, nowadays, children appreciate authenticity. So it's very important. Uh, also, the way we children, they deal with the children. They should not, there should be no fear between teacher and child. Uh, while, of course, uh, you can't just say that we are friends and therefore it's cool, you, you can bring a glass of beer and drink in front of That's not, in fact, that's not friendship. True friend will say beer is harmful. I would rather have a friend who tells me, look here, this is dangerous, than a friend who says, ah, it's cool to have beer with me. Because <laughs> you need a friend who is good friend. So, they, so friendliness, they should feel you are approachable. So that's something uh, both inner nature, countenance and in our dealing. They should not feel shy of sharing things which they feel is, oh no, I should not in front of. Then they grow, they become conscious. Then must have any, huh? third is, must not have any sense of essential superiority over his student. Nor preference or attachment whatsoever for one or another. This is a very important skill. Each child is unique. Some children are better. But simply because they are better or they are more intelligent, one starts feeling attached and superior, tries to shy away from the difficult ones, just like many doctors, they don't want to take up difficult cases. 
So, you know, one should be ready to take up the challenging, difficult. They must understand it's a challenge at you. It's wonderful. So, they should not shy away. Fourth, must know that all are equal spiritually. And instead of mere tolerance, must have a global comprehension or understanding. This requires a great degree of vastness. And finally, the business of both parent and teacher is to enable and to help the child to educate himself. This was the first point we are talking about. Lead him to the doors of knowledge. Teach him how to learn himself. And to help the child to educate himself, to develop his own intellectual, moral, aesthetic and practical capacities and to grow freely as an organic being. Not to be kneaded and pressured into form like an inert plastic material. I know a person here in the ashram he has studied in the ashram school. Somebody whom I will rate as really among the most brilliant. And um, obviously he's alive, I won't take his name. But how he used to spend his time during the education period? He was telling me, I used to go to the library and read a lot of encyclopedia. That's how he spent. And he's really brilliant. He knows almost about, you know, any subject you pick up. So I remember having a discussion with him and I was very happy. Here is somebody with whom you can discuss anything. And he knows something about everything, <laughs> practically. So, it's like developing organically. This is what it means. Not like forced material. So, these ideas should go. Now, people often have a block in the mind that, but it doesn't work. No, let's, whether it will work or not is next step. Nishkam karma. Let the idea spread. See, Christ was asked that, why are you talking all this to all these people because nobody will understand you. He says, see, I am a farmer. I am throwing seeds. Out of a thousand seeds, some will, many will fall on rocky soil, nothing will come out. Some will fall on very wet and porous soil, nothing will come out. Some will fall on soil which is ready and sprouts will come up, but they will get entangled with weeds. So out of thousand, one seed will blossom into a tree and give birth to many seeds. That's enough recompense for me. And mother would say, I don't want brilliant students. It's enough if seven, once she was told, seven children out of 150. They are like something solid. She says, seven, it is very good. <laughs> so this idea, one should understand that, well, uh, always when we throw these seeds, it's not that every teacher will pick up, every teacher is ready, every teacher will put into practice. It's okay. But maybe one teacher will pick up and will be the right material and it, that teacher will become seedling for others. So let's do it in that spirit of Nishkam Karma. So that is the real meaning I understand from a non-profit organization. <laughs> it is doing it as a Nishkam Karma. It may not bring instant success, it's okay. But we have thrown ideas in the atmosphere. And these ideas sometimes are far ahead of their times. Maybe somebody will catch them 20 years down the line. When somebody whom you had given the idea after 20 years suddenly will grow up and uh, confronted with something, some wise person will tell something or read something. Ah, yes, yes, in our teacher's training this was told to us by so and so ma'am or so and so sir. It will be beautiful. You may not know it. It's okay. So, Nishkam. So, non-profit organization is a Nishkam or a Karma Bhav organization. <laughs> That's how I define it. So, she says, uh, egoism should not be there because that creates a problem. We should be open to new creative ideas that will come. And most important thing, she says, to love to learn is the most precious gift that one can make, make to a child to learn always and everywhere. So, real life events, they can give in projects. Kya hua aaj? Kya khaya? You can learn from anything and everything. So, again, I am not entering into the details of each of these. Uh, it's a vast subject. Then, um, so, another important thing is knowing oneself. So, all this self-knowledge starts with observing oneself that children can engage in. Uh, that, you know, they observe themselves and what they discover. Also, what is spiritual education? Ultimately, that there is something always more. Adhyatma, something. Adhyatma, the, that which is higher, always higher. If we can put into that idea that, well, mind is not ultimate, there is so much more. We have opened the door to spiritual education. 
So we don't have to use even the word spirit, spiritual. So without using words, psychic education as I said, love, truth, good, beauty. What is meant by right association, how it nourishes us, what is beauty. If they learn the sense of the beauty and beautiful, they I think it will itself go a long way in nurturing the psychic education. And uh, so this is about how to work on ourselves to be a facilitator, engage with integral yoga. There is no other way I know. <laughs> a teacher has to be a yogi to practice integral education. At least he must be on the path of the yoga and as he develops, he will discover new possibilities. There is no second way. It can't be done by mentally understanding. In fact, one will not understand because uh, these are not concepts, they are uh, truths uh, which have been given to us by experience. And so the only way they can be, once again, is by living that experience. And to live that experience, one has to engage in the yoga. Um, to whatever extent. It's not that everybody will have the psychic realization or the spiritual realization. But if you are moving in that direction, that is enough because you will be supported by the grace. That's all. The grace will then use us as instrument for service. And that of course is a big subject. How do we take integral education into conventional schools? Prepare them ideatively. That's all one can do. We do the other way around. We want to teach them some practical methods. Yes, there are practical methods like learning to be quiet, something like guided imagery, all that can be taught. But through a kind of um, interactive sessions, children can be made more conscious. Just make them more conscious about themselves, about life, about dealing with money, dealing with relationship. They will feel connected. If you go and tell them, Bhagawan ki baat karne wale, they will sleep off or throw airplanes at us. <laughs> Near to the far, this is the principle. So we should talk to them about what they connect with. Their issue is exams. Teach them how to concentrate. At least they will learn how to concentrate. Teach them that play is as important as, you know, reading, studying. Teach them the value of staying quiet. Teach them the value of discipline. You have actually given uh, integral education without using the word. Why? Because they want to do well in exams. So they will want to know. <laughs> So, what distracts them, how to bring back concentration, all this is part of integral education, a vast subject. So, we can uh, take it to conventional schools and uh, success, what is success? This itself can be discussed. So, success is not just an end point. Success is, uh, there is no end point to success actually. And they will love this idea. There is no end point to success. You can always do a thing better. To fulfill one's own purpose is success. To be able to stay, some of them will say, I want to be happy. To be able to be happy. Uh, in one of the interactions, somebody said, I want to be happy. I said, okay, do it. You will need to practice yoga to be happy. <laughs> all your life under all circumstances is yoga. Fair enough. Because the person thought I will retort and say, happiness is no goal of life. I said, okay, valid goal. I'll tell you the path. You want to do it your way, you can try. But ultimately you will come to yoga. There is no other way one can be happy always under all circumstances except by engaging in yoga. So this is how. What approach should we have as facilitators when we come across a rigid audience? <laughs> I have an answer, by, bypass them. <laughs> because, you see, how do you, uh, don't try to force break. So what you do is you soften. So how do we soften? Some, something is rigid, how do you soften? You don't straight away hit, then you are breaking. It will cause reaction. Soften it by, you know, going around, all around, little bit tinkering, an idea here, something with which they can connect, an idea there. And you are also addressing to those who are open. Not everybody is rigid. They are those who are open. Interact with them, doesn't matter. You will see that out of 10 rigid people, at least 3-4 will begin to soften. Now more 3-4 soften, another 2 will begin to soften. But if you directly hit their head by, then it will create a disturbance in the whole thing. So soften them before the uh, opening comes. So um, this softening takes place by building a whole, you know, 
thing around, you know, narrative, as they say, <laughs> narrative around. <laughs> so, and uh, see, there are certain terms which create uh, resistance. So, in today's time, so we should not use those terms. No need to use terms like God. God gives us a feeling of an old granny talking about, you know, some kya God ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain. Aise nahi. But highest, perfection, progress, ultimate, source, this they understand. Don't, don't use terms which are going to create um, reactions. So, dharma, but don't talk dharma as ritualistic. Dharma is not ritualistic. I mean, we can say a part of it can be connected even with the rituals. But they must understand dharma is the law of your being. Everything has its own dharma. A butterfly must be like that. Seasons, each fruit has its own dharma. So, you know, that way when they understand things in their vastness, then they open. One of the best ways of opening a rigid mind is by expose, exposing it to the vastness of vision. So, uh, this way we can bring in these ideas without, like intuition. So, word intuition create, but to be quiet and see what springs from inside. Psychic education, instead of soul within you, which is escapes time and place and does not die, you will tell them that, ah, Gita mein padha hai. have you seen, they will ask you a question next. Have you seen the soul? What does it look like? Then they should know that God or divine or something dwells here and they should learn to concentrate and consult their heart before doing anything. That's enough. Without using the word soul. In Hindi, we say, the soul is dead, the soul is dead, the So these are some of the things and uh, it's an art which develops as we go about. And as I said, if you engage in yoga, I am sure the Divine Mother's grace will pour in number of ideas. So as a final comment, uh, read Mother and Shurabindo's writings. There should be study group. Straight, there is so much they have written on education. So it should be a proper swadhyaya. And then if you have questions, you feel free to write them and I will be happy to respond. So um, read Mother and Shurabindo, maybe a weekly swadhyaya with... Uh, few of you, but when people come, you can have it. Why not? After all, Mother and Shurabindo's writings on education are not like a particular religious colouring. So you should not feel shy like principles of teaching. Read it. And if you are doing it regularly, then it will be very easy to read with them. A passage or things like that. I am sure you are doing it, but it should be done. Don't worry about how people will take it. No, we will be paralyzed into action if you start thinking what they will think, what society will think. Nobody can ever act with all these thoughts. Do your bit as a nishkam karma. Leave the results to the hands of the divine. Okay. I think all the questions are touched. Yes, if anyone has a quick response, we have five minutes, five, seven minutes. Otherwise, we can always take up questions. You can send me the questions if they come later on. So please feel free to send subsequently when you sit together. And I'll send you the recording. It will anyways come on Aroma. So, you know, many things, points, they can be picked up later. I'll send the recording. I'll request to process it early and share it with you. It was very beautiful hearing from you all. It was really, really Always a joy. <laughs> and maybe sometime make a trip here. Yes. Sure. But yeah, where we can meet, interact like last time and yes. sit and talk personally. Yes. Yes, yes. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Alokta, what are the most important things which we as a team have to follow as a discipline. Uh, one or two tips which we have to do it regularly. The most important is engage in yoga. If you ask me as a team, uh, along with education, share things about, of course the journey is each one's, but then you are tied with the knot of integral education. Integral education flows from integral yoga. <laughs> if you really want to practice, because you won't find these concepts anywhere else, you know. So, discuss also integral yoga amongst yourself to make this clear. 
practice um, certain um, basic things like uh, you know self mastery and cultivating calm and peace that's very important when teacher goes into the class it should be calm so this if we just cultivate peace within us a lot will be achieved thank you okay thank you so much thank you okay okay bye 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 thank you very much welcome bye bye